In your module 4, this, there is a discussion about the basic principles of research design. So we have three principles of research design. The first one is the presence of local control. Now, this means that you try to, to have blockings, you group experimental units, in order for you to have a homogeneous setup. So you try to have a uniform um, set of experimental units. Now, number two is replication. Replication means that you subject, you subject three or more EU on a certain treatment, on a certain treatment. So by doing so, you are allowing yourself to have a set of valid data. Number three is randomization. Randomization is assigning random numbers or random experimental units on a specific treatment. Say for example, you have three treatments, T1, T2, and T3. You assign random numbers here. So say for example, your experimental unit is RAT. You assign RAT9, RAT7, RAT4. So RAT1, RAT6, RAT5. RAT3, RAT2, RAT8. So, this one, uh, you assign randomly RAT or experimental unit under a certain treatment. Now, how many replicates? There are three replicates for each treatment. So, let's have an example. Let's take this one as an example. All right. Suppose a researcher wanted to conduct a study on the weight increment of bangus cultured in fish pens using varying amounts of fish pellet and leftover breads as supplemental feeds. So, let's say you have four treatments. T1 is 50-50, 50% fish pellet and 50% leftover breads. Your T2 is 75, 25, 75 fish pellet and 25% leftover bread. Your T3 is pure leftover bread. And lastly, your treatment for or your positive control, pure fish your EU or your experimental unit is bangus. So you can code bangus as letter B, which stands for a single experimental unit bangus. So to calculate the number of EU, number of EU, you will need in the experiment just multiply the number of treatments, four treatments, multiplied by the number of replicates. So in this case, according to the basic principle of research design, three is the minimum. So four multiplied by three, you will need 12 EU. So you will number bangus B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, B8, B9, B10, B11, up to B12. So you have 12 experimental units. Then to follow the next or and the last principle, you will assign you will assign randomly your EU to each treatment. So T1 T2, T3, and your 
positive control. So you can assign randomly B6, B12, B11, B5, B9, B7, B... Mm, ano pa? B1, B4, B2, B8, and lastly B10. So, here you go. So, you followed the three basic principles of research design. Now, we proceed to the next one. The basic types of research design. In our discussion and in your problems, you may use two types of research design. The first one is completely randomized design, CRD. And the second one is randomized completely black design. Um, there are other several types of experimental designs which you may use if deemed appropriate. Again, CRD and RCBD were discussed in your module 4 and so let me put the discussion into simpler form. Now, these two types of research design is based on random assignment. So you assign randomly your EU to a specific treatment. But the difference between the two is that in completely randomized design, it is deemed or it is expected that your setup is already homogeneous. Your experimental unit is uniform. While on the other hand, randomized completely black design requires requires you to have blockings or blocks requires blocking so when do you use rcbd and when do you use crd so in the last example you may notice that we assumed that the experimental unit bangus is already homogeneous. However, when we have an uniform um, experimental unit, say for example, we have different sizes of bangus, we will need to do blockings or we need to block the sizes. Say for example, you have uh, measured the the length of bangus or what's the easiest way the age of bangus you may block age you may block size you may block height you may block sex so these are variables which can be blocked so in that case um, in that example say for example you have a, a group of differently aged bangus so you will block age now to understand the two the difference between the two let's answer the questions in your worksheet number three so we answered already this one so what's the research design used c r d and the structure was presented a while ago now we proceed with question number one in this problem a researcher wanted to know the antibacterial strength of increased concentration of guava the scientific name of guava is written or all scientific name names are written like this italized 
increased concentration of guava leaf extract against E. coli. So you have three treatments, T1 0.25 ml, T2 0.5 ml, T3 1 ml. Now, you are tasked to create an appropriate research design structure using a commercial antibacterial drug as a control. So, first things first, what is the type of research design you will use? So, basically, it will be CRD. So, how many treatments? So, you have four treatments. Why four treatments? You will include the control. So, T1 is 0 0.25 ml t2 is 0 0.5 ml t3 is 1 ml and control positive is drug the antibacterial drug say for example this one um the concentration of the antibacterial drug is usually determined by the laboratory technician. So, for the sake of this problem, let's say 1 ml. Now, number 3, how many replicates? 3 replicates. If you want, want to add more, you may, but the limit is or the minimum is three replicates so to determine no, the number of eus to be used um four treatments 40 treatments multiplied by three so you have 12 eu now number five what is the eu or the experimental unit in this study in this study the experimental unit is the e coli so let's create the structure of the research design t1 t2 t3 and your positive control so how many e coli uh, you may label E. coli as E, E1 to E12. So, you randomize the assignment of the experimental unit. So, let's say, for example, E11, E9, E8, E6, E4, E2, E10, E7, E5, E1, E3, E, ano pang kulang? What's the missing one? E12. So, E12. So, here's now your structure of your CRD. Hope you get that right. Now, we proceed with the next.